Hey, <laughs> how's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome, welcome. My name is Lauren. I'm a caster for Chair League. Hey, what's up? The winds, how's it going? This is the definition of a last second cast. Uh, I had the good fortune of casting Brawls Deep in Miami Esports. As of like 10 minutes ago, I was not actually slated to do this, but my night freed up. And I always look forward to the opportunity to cast both of these teams, so... Uh, Synth Paradox, another caster, messaged me on Twitter and was like, or on Twitch and was like, hey, there's this uh, Pro Division game open. And I saw it was on Twitter and I was like, oh, neat, cool. So, I like scrambled to get everything ready. It's a little bit of a production, but here we are. So, it's going to be Brawls Deep going up against Miasma Esports. I'm trying to reach out to a representative of Miasma Esports, they're the away team, so they're going to select the first map of this best of three. So once they hear from them, we can get the lobby created, get the draft links and everything set up, and get this bad boy on the road. But how's everybody doing? All right, I already have Fox on my list. Is there anybody else? All right, so I have Swollen too. Yeah, ask him. Maybe he has an idea. All right, so inform me where we going the Braxis holdout. Neat. All right. Bit me. No, Carl's still there. I haven't made the cool Carl thing. Wait, what? Where'd the Carl go? That requires investigative journalism right there. Hello, Nightbot? Hello? Is Nightbot going away? All right, Nelter's on that side, Tiger. I thought I was rolling into the lobby. It's, I can I can set up the, uh, the draft while all this is going on. Again, bear in mind, like this is the definition of last minute. Like, I when did I accept this? I accepted or I clicked the up to cast this eight minutes before the schedule start time. So I had to go grab my laptop and my microphone and get everything all set up. I was just chilling. I was living my life. Actually, uh, Kagiri and I later on might be playing a pretty, pretty interesting game. That'd be fun. So, bear with me while uh, we get all this set up. Start round one. As in made the. Cool Carl command. Hey Angus, how's it going? Man? What? Where's the Carl? Nightbot has died. I don't I don't know. What was it? Oh, thanks for those steps, mission. Cool, cool. I'm gonna host you, do you know? Oh, yeah, all right, he figured it out. <laughs> all right. All right, Swollen's in there, specialties joining. Like, I am legit scrambling to do all this. All right. Alright, Starbador. 
He's on the right side. Okay. All right. I mean, that wasn't that bad. Tantro, I need to flip him with Fox. No, Fox is on that side. Crunk juice. Who am I switching him with? Oh, specialty. All right, cool. Swap with specialty. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Nightbot. I'm logging it. I'm like, I logged in. Don't. I just don't see it. Weird. <laughs> Learn casting height. Yeah, rip Nightbot, I guess. I don't know. He's just not in here. Yeah, it's not in the channel, so there we go. I don't know. But set the draft links out to these teams. I'm excited for this. Like Braxis Holdout is one of my it's becoming one of my more preferred maps to cast. It's hard from a uh T Tour standpoint. There's always something going on on like both ends of the map, but and stop it from being fun. How's it going, Special T? The wins. Rip Night Pot, never forget. <laughs> I'm like legit just scrambling around trying to get everything ready. I normally set all this stuff up like way in advance, and I try to get people in the lobby like 15 minutes beforehand. And so I just feel a little out of sorts getting everything set up, but uh, I think we've done it. Brawls Deep are ready, Miasma Esports. Once they click the ready button, we can get this show on the road. Hope everybody's having a good night. Letting them know thanks for waiting for me. Appreciate that. I got it all. I've, I've done it. I've done it. Glad my... Dude, by the end of last night, I casted the uh, Arena Brawl tournament, which was a ton of fun. And uh, my freaking throat was killing me at the end of the night. Like, holy crap, man. Like, I, when I got done, I was like, man, I can hardly even talk right now. But it feels better now. For the most part. Draft is underway, though. Brawls Deep are going to be the home team, so they enjoy the luxury of first ban, first pick. Samro is a selectable hero. Um, all new heroes are available day one. We've seen him show his face quite a bit since his release in Share League. If you have a Samro player in your first ban, first pick, I think it's the best way to go to ban somebody else. Force the other team to either give you Samro. Or to take them off the board themselves so you can try to position yourself better further down the line on the draft. Um, but this is also something of an oddball map. Heroes you would not really hear come into the conversation make grand appearances. Like heroes like Rexar, he shows up. Uh, Gazlo, to a lesser extent these days, he's not the worst pick at all by any stretch of the imagination. Alarax a hero that's been seeing something of a rise in the competitive scene. Uh, in today's um, HTC games, in the group stages, we saw him quite a bit doing work. I mean, as these high skill ability players get a better handle on him, telekinesis in a Discord strike can really be a difference maker. So I'm not at all surprised to see him get banned out. Brawls Deep went into their time pool quite a bit, really debating and thinking on how they wanted to approach this. Um, I would imagine that conversation at the next few picks down the line in mind. Yes, yeah, me sports are gonna start to go into their time pool as well now. Heroes like Malfurion floating out there. Um Vala is gonna be the choice. Zarya is still a strong hero, especially on this map, I feel, where there's so much emphasis on the four man early game. I would not be surprised to see her get picked up at some point. Vala is a very strong range damage dealer, and this caster's personal opinion, the best range damage dealer right now. If you can keep her alive. And that becomes the question mark, um, especially in these four man skirmishes when Braxis sold out. If your team can't adequately protect the back line in the earlier stages, she could definitely lose out on value. 
But she's also just a strong threat to take off the board. My fearing's gonna be the ban for or the pick for Brawls Deep, followed by Chen and Falstead. Um, two two viable solo laners. I would imagine we'd see Chin. Falstead gets a ton of value um, on this map for his ability to help close out a kill on one part of the map and fly the other to secure both the points. Identifying that Shin will likely be the solo laner, Brawls Deep are going to help themselves to the Renegade to pick up Tychus for the high health pool burn. They're also going to get their Warriors of Choice in ETC. Stage Dive is a heroic that's seen a ton of play um, of late and with good reason. And on a map like Braxis Holdout where global presence is so important, he can do very similar things that Falstag can do. Help secure a kill in one part of the map, power slide out on somebody, leave them out of position, and stage dive somewhere else. <laughs> MZ Nizzin said, I learned drafting today from MVP in denial. There were some oddball drafts, man. They made them work, but uh, I'm wondering to see how far denial is going to go. They, they seem to struggle against uh, Burning Rage a bit more than they probably would or should if they have aspirations to make it to, like, top four. But we'll see. Going on in the second band phase, rolling through rather swiftly. Kerrigan Morales is going to be taken off the board. Globals are a thing. You don't want Grandpa's Buick flying the whole team around somewhere. I get that. You also uh, don't want to force yourself in a position where you have to dive the back line of the enemy team. Malfurion doesn't really do well with that, I feel. And Tyga says short range. So I think that's a smart ban on a number of occasions or for a number of reasons. Uh, Kerrigan's a strong hero on this map. Those are some tight corridors going over the points. Makes it really easy to land those Kerrigan combinations. Ariel's going to be the selection for me as me sports. Burger King Crown stands to get a good amount of value on a hero like Falstead. And I'd imagine they'd have um, another firm target in mind in these last two choices. Starting to go into their time pool again. They have one warrior already. I don't think that they're in a position where they need to worry about locking in their warrior right now, but they might want to do so just to have the flexibility of seeing the rest of Brawl's Deep's composition before they lock in their last selection. That's the kind of flexibility I, I think would best serve them. I don't see Brawl's Deep going for Murden in this situation, so they do they do they do pick up Murden now. And I, and I really agree with that. Um, Meriden's a really strong choice, especially with regards to Falstad and Ariel. That'll make Falstad's Q really easy. He can chain off a of detainment strike really well also. And he offers himself a ton of sustain in team fights, especially at level 13. So I like that. A couple of heroes to select for Brawls Deep now, though. They probably want another frontliner or some form of engage. ETC and another frontliner will give Tychus a ton of time to uh, get the full duration out of his minigun. Also, what should or could help Malfurion land roots really easily and secure um, kills that way. I feel like Malfurion struggles in general with a triple backline. He doesn't really have a whole lot of burst healing or <laughs> really any burst healing. So if you have too many squishy heroes that require the full attention of the support, you, you stay in a struggle in prolonged fights. Especially going up against a hero like um, Ariel, who can uh, really kick out the, the heals in an AoE fashion. So I'm wondering if they're considering a, a hero like Thrall. Li Ming is going to be the choice. Does take away a potentially strong synergy from Ariel. I do think that Li Ming could have still fit into Miyaz Mi Sports' composition. So, you know, as much benefit to Brawl's Deep as it is a denial to Miyaz Mi Sports. We're going to see how else they're going to round out their composition. I still feel like they need a solo laner. Rexstar is still available. Thrall is available. Illidan. Spicy. I'm wondering how Illidan and Chin are going to match up together if they are the solo laners. I would imagine that they would be. Um, it also opens up another global option should Illidan go for the hunt. That'd be pretty neat. It feels bad when you're about to get back behind your tower. Is like, oh, that was a crazy team fight, guys. I'm pretty low. And all you just, you just hear that 
whoosh coming out of nowhere and, and Illidan just elbow drops on your face. Feels bad. So I feel like both teams really have helped themselves to like some pounce potential. Falstaff could fly in. Um, stage dive, presumably. The hunt, presumably. So you're going to have to definitely watch your P's and Q's, so to speak. Golden going to be last hero selected for me as me sports. Um, in a full 5-on-5, five five, Goldan stands to have a pretty decent time. Uh, Illinan might try to look, jump on his face, but the turnaround could be there. Uh, Chen's high mobility allows him to both get to the enemy team's back line as well as protect his pretty reasonably. Uh, Murden would likely save his dwarf toss for the right moment if he needs to use it offensively or defensively. So I think both teams came away with what they were looking for overall. Um, I think both compositions have a lot of merits to them. And as we see at the pro division level, generally just comes down to execution. <laughs> Axe Master in the lobby said he lost his pants, BRB. I hate when that happens. It happens to me all the time. It's tough. I can empathize, Axe. I relate. I do. <laughs> what the heck? See, I'm actually glad I got the opportunity to cast cast uh this best of three um i was watching hdc today and i was like all pumped up excited for tomorrow too i really want to see fanatic i'm rooting for them so that'd be neat but uh i know members of both of these teams uh fc ignition was actually an episode of meta of the storm so we're cool Nine out of ten players are ready, though. Presumably, once uh, Axe finds his pants, we'll be able to <laughs> get things going there. I imagine so, Reno. I imagine. I, I I didn't take it seriously. I think they were trying to troll me. It said ten out of ten players are ready. So then I click start game, and then it went down to like nine. And I was like, wait, what? But then the game started anyway. So if anybody, uh, <laughs> if anybody really was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oops. HTC looking good. Oh, hyping on Fanatic as well. Cool, man. I need that good tastes. <laughs> EU low. That imported support, though. OFZ, I'm going to be casting with a uh, Hoss next week for Heroes Hype. And I might even get the cast with him this weekend. He, he'd uh, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do some uh, the Tespa stuff this weekend. So I might get to do that. <laughs> I like that you guys just like hanging out while the game is going on. Alright, we're almost loaded in now. Again, this is going to be a best of three for those uh, sports fans rolling in. Which is my preferred method for a uh, trailer. But first game of the night. On the left side, we do have Brawls Deep. FZ Ignition's on Illinan. Nailter's playing Lee Ming. Tiger's on Tychus. Crunk Juice's playing ETC. And Special T. So I'm out here. Wait, what? What? I'm central. Systems All right, online. over on the right, we got me as me sports swollen, Ten, playing Murden Foxes on Golden Axe Master playing Falstead, playing Cassage, Tantros on Chin, one. and how do you say that? Strab the door. All right, I definitely have Central select. Strabador is on Ario. I don't know. All five members of Brawl's Deep are going to help themselves at this top wall. They burned the tower down before we're going to rotate up on the camp. Crunk Juice is low enough. He ate the lion's share of the damage. Might end up paying for it with his face. Power slides to his demise. Turnaround kill on Murder. Now turns this into a one for one. Make that one for two. And oh no. 
Goldan's gonna go up. Axmax is gonna blow up as well. I'll trade the cow any day. I can get four heroes up. Boy. Four for one. A strong start to say the least. Four brawls deep. Tantros is down here chugging. He's pouring a little pouring a little liquor out for his teammates. FC Ignition out front. Wave is here to eat some of these shots up. FC Ignition the target. YOLO in's gonna go down. Two takedowns to four. All considered though, I mean as me sports are not behind in experience, they definitely lose that top wall. That's gonna be a point of concern. It's, uh, these guys, these guys, I mean. I will double and triple check that I'm on central, but I live like it would not behoove me by any stretch of the imagination young So I don't know. Down at the bottom lane, FZ and Tantro are gonna play this immortal game. I, like I just, barring some kind of added pressure from minions, I just don't see either one of these heroes the losing out together. First beacon phase is gonna be here though. You normally see the solo lane at the top, so I'm curious to see this this inverted progression. But, uh, right now, both beacons are in possession of Brawl's Deep, and that bad boy's racking up fast, already nearing 30% and rising. They also are enjoying a tier advantage, 4-3. I'll get the talents in a second. Starbador's pretty, uh, about half health, no hope, though. Power slide in on Crunk Juice Space, the root goes in, he's able to battle roll calculated. Starbador, the next target, oh, Orb comes across to the side of his face. He drops, swollen with 50 health. Power slide's gonna see him off. Six takedowns, two. Level four is now here for uh, me as me sports. And Fox, you wanna be careful, good sir. Someone will try to do it. And you can see Nailter was thinking about rotating around. He's like, eh. Yeah. Excellent. The enemy will have to deal with a much larger. Akuma says, when are we gonna see Brawl's Deep and two straight seasons of being undefeated? It's an interdastic question. Well, they uh, I don't know. They're definitely looking strong. They are out of the gate for real. 100% to zero beacon pressure. Here they go. One tower is about to go down. The other one's low as well. Nailter is here. Tychus and Chen gonna war and rage on in the top lane. That stands to be a much more difficult task for Chen, I feel. His shielding is gonna have to be critical up against the minion. Power slide goes in. Crunk juice on the engage. Fox the target. Goldan doesn't have the most mobility in the world. He is able to get back. Axe Master turns around on the flank. Bow rolls back behind his fort. He lives to fight another day. Specialties chunked down pretty good, though. Power slide goes in. The root was not there. At least not able to secure a kill. Specialty Malfurion drops. Our support's gone, guys. We, we should go. We should leave. Excuse me. No, nope. ETC is going to drop as well. So, I mean, all things are pointing towards a lead of sorts for uh, Brawl's Deep. That is not to say that Miyazaki yes, Esports are out of this by any stretch of the imagination. They're managing to turn things around. They are uh, still more or less even on experience. Which is not that bad when you consider that they, they just ate a 100% to zero uh, beacon phase. They actually were even able to save their forts. They are low on health. They've taken some battle damage, but not a bad way to, to move towards heroics. All considered. Tantro and Tiger up here. The Chan Tyka's war continues on. Looking at talents, we got Immolation, Friend of Foe, Flexor Block, and Orb Build, along with Force Armor. Li Ming likes to sustain. Press the advantage the bigger they are. Quarterback, Echo Pedal, Loudspeakers. It's like there's a good bit of action going on. Clans, Loons, Grace, and Shando's Clarity. Third win, pretty standard stuff, I'd say. Bound by Shadow, Pursuit of Flame. Improved life tag. Okay. Wingman. The bribe stands to get a good amount of value. Boomerang. Power slide. Crunk juice looking to engage. Face on afterwards. Stun missed. The engage wasn't there for the rest of his team. Um, Siege camp is also going to make itself apparent. Cleanse is going to help him get out. Specialty is going to eat a little bit of poke damage. Tiger rotates down. He's killing in and Chen once again warring in the top lane. The orb goes in on Axe Master. Ouch. Empathic link. Might see the Burger King crown on Murd and the chin more off the power slide. Isolates Ario. I don't know if you've got enough hope, sir. You can try, but with 17 health, they're going to go down. Fox eating some damage as well. Manages to avoid the magic missile. 
Q from Falstad helps the rest of his teammates get out of there. And that's the uh, tricky part about going up against the UTC that knows how to do it. The power slides have been real from Crunk Juice. Setting up bowling pins, which are subsequently knocked down by the remaining members of Brawl's team, who have no scruples about diving behind forts and everything else. Uh, Boulder flavor keg toss in Elusive Brawl. So if both forts are going to go down. Are we talking about the pro division in chat? Oh, oh, they should see this shit. There's gonna be some open qualifier stuff, should be cool. Tantro uh, feeling bold enough to jump in there, thanks to the bolder flavor, the turnaround was not there. And it could have been a, a good moment for um, Yes Me Sports to jump in. Heroics were, will be here imminently. And if they were gonna look at t t take a team fight, I feel like they would have wanted to go in pretty hard before level 10 came around. They get the siege camp and then effectively have to give it up since they're down there heroic. Stage dive, Crunk Juice is looking to go after Axe Master and Ariel. Starbador trying to back away. The center grate's not gonna net a kill on Fox. This tower is gonna deplete its last remaining shots on Tiger. Ariel is way out on an island, and that's the ninth takedown for Brawls. Saw stage dive, we saw disintegrate. We're also gonna have metamorphosis, so no hunt. Commander, come in, dear Odin, and uh, Twilight Dream. We want the aggression. As me, sports are forced into a defensive posture without their heroics. They they would be venturing out to try to fight over these beacons, or even potentially this boss at their own peril. Crunk Juice is gonna get this party started. And again, with heroics being so far away, I do believe Brawl's Deep will be able to come away with this more or less uncontested. And with a full power beacon along with it, they've got to be eyeing one of these keeps. Boss is picked up. Everybody's healthy. Every almost, Heroics should be here. Odin will be in, 20, in 30 seconds or less. Stage dive is back up, so they'll be at near full power. Heroics will be here thanks to False Dead going down to the bottom lane. So he should be able to fly up as well once that happens. So they can look to defend this on even Talenteers. This is a ton of siege pressure to worry about. FZ Ignition and half health stage dive the aggression. Crunk Juice jumps in into keep range. Power slides back. The wandering keg though. Oh no! Isolating two members. Malfurion drops ETC as well. Have we overstayed? Have we gotten a little too forward leaning as the member for Brawl's Deep? Turn this into a six tick down to nine affair. Swollen is low on health. Tantra has a good amount of shields. This boss and everybody else, they're eyeing this top keep. One way or the other, this is going to go down. Getting those two kills at least saves the game. If for whatever reason, Miami Sports got wiped, the reason we lost three heroes there, that probably would have been ball game. Again, it's one of those situations where it just could be worse. I mean, it's rough to lose your keep nine minutes into a game on any map. But when you look at the uh, the parameters of the situation, you go in to that team fight facing down a 100 to zero beacon along with a boss, and you're just getting your heroics as it starts up to come away with two kills to lose no one. You can do things to mitigate. The, uh, the catapult. You can get these camps. Get the siege camp. They'll be able to at least take some of the pressure off of that. They had the lane pushed up to the top. 13 will be here, though, for Brawl's Deep uh, before long. If Miasmi is supposed to looking to be aggressive, this is another one of those situations where they'd want to do it sooner rather than later. And uh, they might, if they can time their CC properly, they may be able to prevent him from stage diving out of here. There's the wandering keg that stands to interrupt. He has not yet started stage dive. I think he's waiting for all the uh, CC to really make itself apparent. Or he's just looking to buy time for the rotation. The Tamer Strike sends him into the boards. He's trying to jump. He vaults in. Crystal Ages comes down. The counter aggression. The return response is here. Brawl's deeper looking at scrap. Tiger at low on health. Tychus goes down. That's huge. We still have Metamorphosis Disintegrate available. All the rogues spin on the side of me as me sports. Crunk Juice still alive. He makes it out. Warp goes in on Starbador, who's been arguably getting caught forward a number of times this, this match. Max Master's low on health also. Disintegrate sends him up. Double root from Malfurion. 
Sets up more bowling pins. Lee Ming gets another strike. Crunk Juice still being aggressive. Power slides under keep towers to try to secure this kill. Shen's a tough nut to crack, though. Is he too tough? He actually chugs flavor, boulder flavor value talent at level 7, keeping him alive for the moment. Ultimately, he's going to go down. FZ Ignition overstays the welcome. Long enough, though, for Goldan to drop in a very scrappy progression of events. A long and drawn-out fight ultimately leaves the numbers advantage in favor of Brawls Deep, and they're on their way to their third 100% to zero beak. Yes, yeah, me sports playing with heart and gusto, considering that they're down a talent tier for the large part of that to uh, come away with kills at all is a mark of courage. But the way these team fights have gone has just left them on the shorter end more often than not. Stage dive is going to allow Crunk Juice to show up. Tiger eating a bunch of damage. Specialty is here, though. It's the healing. Wandering Keg interrupts the uh, Twilight Dream. Isolates Specialty. Tantra's looking to press that issue even further. Nail Turk and throw orbs over the wall. He teleports. Power slide from Crunk Juice. Chin evaporates. Chase continues. Swollen looks to be the target. Odin's popped. Autobots. Unstoppable. Illinen's able to get out just barely. Murden's gonna go down. That's the whole front line. The nice grenade's gonna knock Fox back long enough. He's trying to drain life to get at least the kill on Tiger. Unable to do so. They do manage to come away with Malfurion, but with another one 100% to zero. LOL. <laughs> This is going to be a mammoth wait. That Signation should be able to patch himself up thanks to his trait. He gets heals off of every auto attack. Starbador and Axe Max look to press the issue. Oh, perhaps I spoke too soon. That Signation gets that free ride back base. Starbador eating a bunch of damage. He has the hope generation, though. No other members of Brawl's Deep are around to press an issue. So that should allow them to, uh,. Burn us down without losing too much. They're definitely going to be able to save their keep at this rate. A little bit of action in the top lane. Tiger Crunk Juice looking to perhaps get on to Fox. But the Mighty Gus is going to say, hey, welcome to the party. Swollen rotates up as well. He's on the chase. Axe Max, the Axe is going to go down, though, as Tychus does. A curveball for sure. Power slide out on two members of Miasmi. Disintegrate goes in, applying further damage. Wandering Keg rolls him around. Specialty steps forward for the Twilight Dream. Shh. Silences three members of Miasmi Sports. Fox is still alive. Ario can't say the same for him. The power slide interrupts the life drain, turning rapidly into a bloodbath. The root stops the dwarf toss. Crunk Juice may have to end up sacrificing his body if Specialty's gonna get out of here. But no, F Signus is here with full health. And Metamorphosis. Swollen may have overstayed. Oh no, he dwarf tosses over the wall, trying to be cheeky. Metamorphosis says, not so fast, good sir. We're gonna hound you down. Get our 20th takedown of the game, 16 to 15. Red team's in front of the tank. Tantro, low on health, he will be able to get back. Lane is pushed up. They're gonna be able to at least march these bad boys up to the, uh, the core. But the siege camp was picked up. That's going to take some of the residual pressure off at least. Crunk Juice Special TFC Ignition rotating back. They want to get their camps. And just continue to press their advantage. All things considered though. The situation overall is the same for Mazm Esports as it was about five minutes ago. They have now gotten on even talent tiers. They have still have their bottom keep. The top keep has been gone since the nine minute mark. This is actually a huge window where 20 is not, not anywhere nearby. This is the team fight that Miasmi Sports needs if they're going to want to try to turn this around. This one could very well define the game. Cleanse goes out on Crunk Juice. Orb streaks across, finds Ari. Odin shows up. Stage dive is going to slow a number of members down. The face mount actually might have saved Swollen's life. Power slide goes in on Chen. Plenty of health. Boulder Flavor should also be able to help him out. Fox on the flank getting targeted by Tiger. Swollen jumps in, misses the Storm Bolt, but it does allow enough heal for Fox to get back. That Q from uh, Tigus is real. Ariel steps forward, lands the heal, getting a good amount of generation. Silence onto Fox. He is able to step back, avoids the orb, killing him. No cooldown resets for you, Lee. Tiger putting pressure on the Swollen, who's starting to back away. Mighty Gust needs to be. I was about to say, Mighty Gust might be a good idea. Secures the disengage. 
And while no one dies, the chunk down members of Yasmin Esports basically have to clear the top lane and offer at least a moment or so. Where Brawl's Deep again will have control of both of the beacons. Ten some yes. I wish I could see that. The Dwarf Toss is actually a little short. He has no mobility for the moment. He's trying to get out of there running like his hair's on fire. And he doesn't have an uh, avatar for a little bit. Wandering Keg is going to isolate Specialty, who's in a very weird spot. Malfurion's going to go down. No Twilight Dream or in. As the Ignition's trying to get back, goes over. Meanwhile, another 100% beacon with camps already applying pressure in these lanes. I mean, as me, Sports going to have to win this fight decidedly. Like, near ace if you want to try to prolong this game. Abyss Ignition uses Metamorphosis, tries to dash back to his teammate thanks to Friend of Foe. Less than 300 health, the keg toss to the back of the face, he's able to escape. ETC cannot say the same. So they get two kills, and the rest of the members of Mias Me Sports are going to be able to hard back. But look, there's already pressure on this top wall, this top lane. The shields are dropping rapidly, they do burn through the, uh, the catapults, but the shield drops at 98%, 97 we do clear out the last remaining um, minions, but this is a fast approaching situation where Brawl's Deep can just look to face roll their heads on the keyboards at the core if they're feeling froggy enough. Axe Master flies down. Mighty Gust nails her forward. That might prove to be uh, less than I. Oh, wow, what? Axe Maxta actually comes away after Lee Ming drops, further staggering out the depths, preventing Brawl's Deep from fighting as a five man unit chases on. Special T and Tiger are able to get back though. Shield is going to regenerate. And again, all considered, things could be infinitely worse for Miasmi Esports. They've managed to stagger out depths. They've somewhat evened it up in takedowns 20 to 15. That was a much bigger disparity. They're actually ahead in experience now. To only lose 3% on your core and you've been without your top keep since the 9 minute mark. And you still hang on to your bottom keep. That's more or less a momentum swing back in their favor. Because a lesser team, we'd be talking about game 2. Real Mr. Oria, thanks for the host. Yeah. Miss Suzuki, my top one on my space. Always a pleasure. Glad to see you. Starbador is going to hearth back. Good amount of pressure placed in the bot lane. Uh, with so many members of Miaz B Sports showing in the top lane, that did give a license for Brawl's Deep to rotate down and try to pick up this bottom key. It finally is going to drop, but it might come at a cost. Twilight Dream goes in. Damage being applied to Axe Master. Does not have Mighty Gust. Crystal Age is safe. Fox space. Malfurion is the first to drop in his scrap. Tiger jumps in the Autobot. He's an Optimus Prime for the moment, looking to deal damage from the back line. Stuns from Crunk Juice. Sets up the kill on Chen. One for one so far. Make that one for two. False step finally goes down. Swollen jumps forward, looking to apply pressure. Tiger is out there on an island going full YOLO in a three for one trade so far. FC Ignition eating tower shots gets outside of range. Four goes back on Swollen's face. He's gone. Streak! <laughs> like, you gotta hook the ball to get that 7 10 split. You gotta do it. The shield is out 85%, only Ariel alive. Illinan is probably the last hero you want just hanging out on your core. And after a very scrappy resurgence from Yasmi Sports, ultimately, Brawls Deep come away with the win. Nice. Cool. That's a really cool game. Um, like I was saying throughout the game, for me as me sports to to rally back the way that they did, um, a lesser team that 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 game probably wouldn't have made it past the thirteen mark. Um, for them to catch up to a uh, brawls deep in experience and and really kind of put the screws to them towards the end. Um, I would not feel dismayed. Like I think they did really well. Um, to, to come back from, from that, it's pretty neat. Let me ask Akuma. Let me ask Akuma if he wants to cast with me. I've never casted with Akuma before. Yeah, Seashell says, surprise, it didn't die. FC's like, 
I'm not. But yeah, yeah, like no health at the end of it. Um, the knockback on Ario probably saved his neck at the end. All my shirts are the best. <laughs> yeah, man, let me get you my uh, Discord link. Mm. All right. Could I have a co caster for the next game? Cool. Ask FC Ignition what map they want while I get all that set up. This would be cool. All right, Kuma said it'll be on in a minute, so we will be here for round two. Infernal Shrines, all right, my favorite. My favorite map to cast, put the smile on my face. Start up round two, look at the draft links. And hang on, let me make sure, let me make sure I'm on central. And as I say that, he, he was, how am I on Western? I don't get it. So, that was on me. I, I was somehow on on Western, and I legit don't know or understand how or why. Like, I, I, I didn't change that. All right. So, we're going to be going to Infernal Shrines. I'm going to go ahead and close out of Heroes and log out and log back in to make sure all that is squared away. I'm trying to think of... Because the last time I switched to Western was like... The last time I casted Team Space Bear? Which was like... Two or three weeks ago now? Like, I, I know I haven't been playing on, on Western that long. And if I have... And that would explain every time I lost, but then every time I won, that would just mean I'm I'm just I'm just that good. Kappa. <laughs> All right. Let me check Discord. All right. And a. Hey. hey, how's it going? Hey, man. Oh, I I'll need to just... fix my sound. I can't hear anything on my end. It'll just be one sec. No problem. I got a message. From where? Oh. There we go. Hello. How's your evening been going? Good man. That looked like a pretty fun game. Oh, I mean, whenever you, whenever we get to cast these guys, it's always a wild time, man. Yeah, brawls deep. Not, I don't know if they've lost a single match all season. I don't. They haven't dropped the set like <laughs> ever. Generally, <laughs> like it's nuts. Yeah, brawls deep is absolutely insane. I'm. I've really been surprised that I haven't seen him go into qualifiers. Well, for context, FZ Ignition was on imported support. He went to PAX West. And that's true. Um, I'm surprised that Brawls Deep as a as an entire unit hasn't tried to go and do qualifiers. Yeah, I mean, I, I know imported support. Um, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say that they split, but with the Tesla College stuff coming up, I know. They were kind of put in a, a spot where they more or less had to decide whether they're gonna pursue that or um yeah it's or go for HTC stuff. I don't blame them. HTC uh, cash monies. Um, I'm I'm all about getting paid if I were to try and be pro. Yeah, I mean when they made that decision to go to Tespa route, they uh, the whole announcement about the league. I don't think it was there yet. And I'm wondering if that is going to uh, shift the priority on some of these these uh, college professional players, because that that's that's a good bit of money, man. If you get a if you get payments from an organization and the salary from Blizzard and you stream, you can do pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. 
uh, there's there's stories about League of Legends players. Uh, my brother was a huge League of Legends player, and there was one guy who decided not to go to medical school because he made so much money just streaming and playing League of Legends uh, professionally that it would just actually be foolish to go to medical school. He was making over $100,000 already. I mean, if you're doing that, playing video games, I don't know if I'm worried about getting a doctor <laughs> at that point. <laughs> yeah. I, I I get it. I for sure get it. Uh, I guess he already had a PhD though. It was a PhD in poning. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. The doctor's in pretty much. <laughs> the Suzuki HCC is an amazing idea, dream come true for some. Yeah, I I was so excited to hear that because. I mean, it's one thing to play for a giant prize pool, but as far as not everybody's going to win that. So yeah. to spread the money out more in a way where it's like, all right, you can still end up making a pretty good amount of money like if you win, but your time and efforts rewarded as well. Like, I just think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And for all the people who do casting, it's actually great for them as well because now they essentially have a full-time job casting. If they if they so chose, yeah, I mean that's a really good point. the The other element that I always had hoped to see in a league, exactly like what HCC is becoming, is like these professional teams. They scrim and practice like eight to twelve hours a day, but there was zero way to monetize that or to have that lend itself towards brand exposure for sponsorships. But now that this is becoming more of an exhibition style thing where you see these teams clash more, there's going to be more exposure, more more time for stuff like that. And uh, I, I just think that will help overall with the, the brand. Yeah, there's I'm sure there'll be people who will return to play Heroes of the Storm now that there's there's actually money on the line to get them to stay in it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised to see people like Urho potentially come back. Uh and there's definitely a lack of, I'd say, good players in NA. And and if Erho has gotten his uh, salt levels under control, I'm sure he can fit <laughs> onto any good team. <laughs> I mean, if I was a if I'm a player like Erho or like uh, Arthalon, that you know has been at the the highest echelons of play, and for whatever reason you felt like the scene was just not really where you wanted to put your time. You see, like, a $3.2 million investment in next year's uh, HDC, and you're like, well, if I start, like, if, my, if I get on a team and I win and, you know, I start streaming more, like, I should be all right. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to be amazing because compared to League of Legends, you, there's not as many pros or semi pros who stream regularly for Heroes mm -hmm. of the Storm. You have guys like Insomnia, uh, Mist. Neither of them are actually pros at the moment, but like they regularly stream, and you can learn a lot. But guys like Crowen, uh, every once in a while they'll, they'll stream, but you don't see almost any of the current like top two teams actually streaming. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it speaks to the potential of Heroes of the Storm in general. So I'm excited for it. The draft is underway, though. I, I put the. Uh... Dobbs link in the lobby. I don't know if you got it or not. Yep, I got it. All right. So, Vala and Malfurion are the bands. This is Infernal Shrine, so I'm not surprised to see Kerrigan get highly prioritized and sought after by Brawls Deep. Kerrigan Titus, yeah. ETC. Who do you think they're going to go for now? So, ETC, uh, I'd prioritize my support here. You've, you've already got in your tank. Um, mm -hmm. Take away one choice from brawls deep now if they pick up oriole here the problem is oriole has no cleanse and kerrigan kind of has a field day with that yeah that'd be a really good point um i i do like the idea of ario especially if this all can get discord strike some multiple heroes reliably but yeah having no cleanse against kerrigan that that's a gamble they opt to not go for a support um, with Malfurion being banned, it becomes something of an arms race of, like, 
you know, how many top tier supports really going to be out there for selection. So I guess they just want to prioritize damage. Yeah, and you can't really pick up a medic against a Kerrigan either. It's just, once again, a field day, she just dives onto medic. She has no way to peel for herself other than her grenade. And she can't heal herself through all that damage. Now, Which my question... For... Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. My question for you is, uh, does Tychus foreshadow something from Brawl's Deep? Like, do you think we'll see Double Warrior or something as wild as, like, a Cho'Gall off of that? It's definitely possible. Normally, when you see someone pick up Tychus, it's because they either want to prevent someone from playing the Double Warrior or they themselves want to pick Double Warrior. Uh, it's also possible that they're just going to value the laser in those close quarters mm -hmm. as being extremely valuable um, or even even Odin. I mean, depending on um, what style you want to go for, the Tychus Kerrigan pulling everyone into the big uh, nuke from Odin is mm -hmm. going to be a lot of damage. I'm really glad to see Odin make it make itself uh, more apparent. I, I, I'd I worried that people wouldn't really care for it that much even after the resistance add-on. But uh, on a map like this, if he is able to just hang back and press buttons, like he can win you the team fight pretty handily. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He has the increased strange. He has mass AOE damage. Uh, then he has the line damage. And he has 25% damage resistance at this point, which is <laughs> you can't just go in on an Odin who's pretty far away now due to the extra range, and he has all that extra damage resistance. We'll see. I mean, with the Ario ban, I'm less inclined to think that we would see Chogo, much to the chagrin of Animates and Azuki. But the Meriden ban from Miasmi Esports opens Brawls Deep up to a couple of selections. As far as control tanks, their, their options pretty much Johanna if they want to go that route. Tyrael is a hero that does pair well with Kerrigan. We'll definitely be able to enable that, uh, that dive. And Brightwing is a denial to uh, make sure Kerrigan doesn't get polymorph when she jumps in. Yeah, the Tyrael pickup here with Kerrigan is absolutely crazy. I believe uh, it was today during the group stage that MVP Black chose Tyrael with uh, Illidan, was it? Uh, I can't remember which melee assassin they chose. But basically, Sanctification with someone like a Kerrigan, actually, I believe it was Kerrigan um, now. Mm -hmm. uh, sanctification with Kerrigan is just insane when you can time those things all together. The Maelstrom keeps getting her shield, so once Sanctification drops, she got big, beefy shields that you have to plow through. It's a really good synergy. Um, having Sanctification and Vulnerability does give her just... She pretty much becomes three-quarters a bruiser, if not a tank at that point, when she comes out of Sanctification. I yeah, think the, the way this draft is shaping up now, a lot of it's going to come down to the timing of sanctification and the level of play of the Kerrigan and Alarak players. Yeah, absolutely. Because if Tyrael comes in too early, Alarak can silence him before he drops sanctification, which mm -hmm. can mean them focusing down the Kerrigan before she can get the sanctification to survive. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. With four seconds left, they lock in Zagara. Um, I would imagine we would see Devouring Maul. Nidus Network does get a lot of value on this map, but just from what I know about the personality and characteristics of Miasmu Sports, they like the team fight, and uh, Nidus, um, Devouring Maul can help them do that for sure. I have a feeling then, if they're, they're picking up Maul, they're going to actually use ETC for the Mosh because it's such a strong combo, Maul into Mosh. That's the way I see it going. I mean, you're looking down the barrel of sanctification. You want to make sure you have plenty of engaged options. ETC and Zagara stand to give you exactly that. Power slide, mosh pit, devouring maul. Leaves plenty of windows for Li Ming to lock their burst in on a target of choice, as well as for Discord Strike to further add on to the punishment with a silence afterwards. That's a ton of engage potential. So what would be an interesting choice here is picking up someone like a Jaina to help kind of control the ETC and Alarak a little bit more because if Alarak uses telekinesis to kind of uh, get into the fight or run away from a Jaina, it's mm. obviously he doesn't have his combo. Hmm. But they're opting for Tassadar here. Interesting. 
Huh. I think they're just kind of committing to Kerrigan here. It's It reminds me of, like, support the Grameen comps that people played uh, back when Grameen wasn't nerfed to mm. Oblivion. And same thing for Kerrigan. Just throw the shields on her. She gets Tyrael shields. She gets Tassadar shields. She'll get the Sanctification. She'll get the Pixie Dust. I don't know, Akuma. I, I feel like Maz Me Sports has the stronger composition. It's going to come down to Brawl Deep's level of play for sure, because Sanctification can win in a team fight. Brightwing and Tassadar offer, you know, a pretty good amount of support, especially with the burst shielding, but there's just so much steady and consistent damage on the side of Miasme Sports that if Sanctification doesn't effectively win the fight, like, automatically, I, I just I just see them struggling. They're just putting a lot on, on Kerrigan's shoulders this game. Yeah, I, I definitely feel the same way. Kerrigan is a burst hero, so you need to secure that kill. But she doesn't have follow-up once you secure the kill. Unlike Greymane, who had insane auto-attack damage, where he just keeps clawing away, nomming at someone's face, and eventually he just wipes out the entire team. I mean, one thing that they have going for them, in general, I'm not <clears throat> the biggest fan of solo warrior Tyrael compositions. Just because as a as a warrior main, I like playing a hero that can I can effectively like peel for, like with stuns or some kind of lockdown. And relying just on sanctification for that makes me feel like I'm just kind of chasing people around as my backline dies. Yeah. But they're pretty dive heavy themselves. Miasme Sports really only has ETC, potentially charge strike. So they got that going for them. I don't know, man. So the Tychus pickup was most likely originally to prevent someone from countering Tyrael since they went the solo Tyrael. And, mm. and since Tyrael is such a soft and squishy tank in comparison to the other ones out there, uh, Tychus is just able to melt through a Tyrael. I mean, in this immediate case, Akuma, if, if I was going to go for a Tassadar in this situation, I honestly would have gone for Zarya instead. Because you're going for a composition that's like, this is the Kerrigan show. Like, we are trying to keep them alive. Tassadar, you know, can help do that for sure, but Zarya's shield on Kerrigan will give Zarya more damage than Tassadar would be able to kick out, and it would take some of the pressure off of Kerrigan and Tychus to effectively carry these team fights, because that's a lot for them. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Zarya is also going to put out more damage, uh, particularly when she starts getting her shields and getting that energy, mm. and I feel... Either ult here on Infernal Shrines is going to provide a lot of value for them. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just my humble opinion. If I'm like, all right, we need to make sure we keep Kerrigan up and and she just kind of runs the show. If I'm looking at Zarya or Tassadar, I'd be like, well, we'll get higher damage numbers out of, out of Zarya for one. Graviton Surge... Potentially an interrupt for Mosh Pit if that's the way it goes. Repulsion. Um, the other rogue is really good too. I, I like taking that one. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, they, they made their bed, but Brawl's Deep has just shown throughout the entire season and even last season that they're so good that hey, maybe maybe there's absolutely no doubt in their minds that they can just steamroll over Miasma with this comp. I mean, they, they have not dropped a set in their <laughs> existence in Chair League. So if a team is going to be able to pull off a, uh, a composition that you and I both feel is on the shorter end, it's them. But um, yeah, it's me. Sports aren't slouches either. I don't think they're just going to be able to walk over them too easy. Yeah, I mean, last match, they definitely you know, threw punches. They didn't go down without a fight, and it still lasted a hell of a long time, despite the fact that they didn't take fourth. We'll see there. Game two, can Brawls Deep close out the set? On the left side, we do have Brawls Deep. FC Ignition's on Kerrigan. Tiger's playing Tassadar. Crunk Juice is on Brightwing. Nelter's on Tyrael. And Special T is playing Titus. On the other side, we got Miasma Esports. We got Fox on that Li Ming. Tantro on Alarak. Swollen on ETC. Star Bardar as uh, our Uther, and we got the Axe Master, not not playing the ETC with the Axes, but as Zagara. 
Now we saw a bit more passive progression last game. I feel out of the gates with all five members of both teams looking to represent the mid lane. Rotates in, nail to fuse forward. Finds Axe Max. The Kerrigan combination does not land a stun. The polymorph goes on swollen. He should be able to get out though. No one's caught out of position. No takedowns just yet. Akuma. Yeah, they don't have much in terms of locking someone down. They only have the Kerrigan stun. So basically you can walk away from it. Nice telekinesis on specialty. Put him on the ropes for a little bit. Another Karen combination, another miss. The stun follow up from ETC though. It's gonna send him back stakes tonight. That's right. First death of the game. Uh, they played their footsie battle and they wound up losing it, unfortunately. Actually, I think what happened was Kerrigan did the grasp first and then saved the stun afterwards. So I'm like, who else has a stun on us? Like, yeah. So nice little staggered approach there from Kerrigan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You'll see a lot of players uh, who are really good, they'll, they'll expect the combo and they'll be able to juke it. But if you hold the combo a little bit, you might actually have more success. Yeah, I mean, we can ask ETC about that. Pressure in the uh, bottom lane, FC Ignition caught forward. Less than 300 health is able to cue back to save his bacon. Swollen rotates down, Nailter pops that out. No engage for you. So ETC picked up the prog rock and that'll help uh, support both Uther and Alarok. They, you know, both walk into the front line alongside of him. Mm -hmm. Looking at the talents while both of these teams poke and scrap in the mid lane. Power hungry, volatile acid applied force. Progrog, like you said, and wave of light. Interesting. Yeah, well, you don't see too much Uther anymore. Uh, he's kind of like, you see him every once in a blue moon, but for the most part, it's kind of like he's, uh, he's just the ghost of Uther in Heroes of the, <laughs> Heroes of the Storm now. Since his uh, last talent shakeup, I, I definitely came to appreciate him more, but in the current meta, those high cooldowns could make him something of a liability. But uh, when you have a hero like Alarak and the whole idea of pretty much behind your comp is to keep him afloat, he can definitely get some work done. So specialty there walked forward pretty far. I was actually expecting the punish coming out from Miasma, but they really weren't able to punish this, and now we're actually going to see Brawl's Deep punishing them. It's been swinging back and forth. Starbador is able to get out of there. Nailter is pretty low as well. Shrine was activated two to two and climbing on the side of Brawl's Deep. Uh, the members of Miasm Esports were chunked down pretty well. They did hit the wall, the ones that could, and they're looking to go again. So right now, I, they're, they're on even talent here. And they can go and fight. They can do as they please but they're slowly giving up this shrine over to Brawl's Deep. That's not really how you want the start of the game to go. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, when you have a composition like Phantasm Esports, I feel like you want to get the most value out of ETC and Alarek before Heroics come into play. They're looking to do that now, that power slide on Crunk Juice. Damage is not there to get the kill. Alarak is actually the first to drop. The counter aggression is real. The Kerrigan combo locks in Swollen. Two for nothing, but the counter kill on Tassadar does come at a cost. So what's interesting is that they've just had Axe Master just pushing and pushing bottom. They, they actually took a kill 4v5, uh, but they obviously gave up two kills. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Axe Master's down there just been casually living his life. The XP hasn't really made itself apparent, but uh, that has been a good amount of denied soak um, because of the prioritization to go to the top lane. This uh, Frozen Punisher will be picked up though by Brawl's Deep. And they're going to be looking to rock and roll with the first Punisher of the game. Yeah, first Punisher, if you have a good combo with a Kerrigan, you can just take down that sidewall and just absolutely punish him. Especially with the Frozen Punisher, they're going to be rooted in place, which sets up very, very easy combos. But we're actually going to have the rotation from uh, Miasma, but I don't know if this is going to go so well for that. It was an interesting flank setup. John Cena was more than ready to jump on that. The Karen combo was there to follow up. Fox finds himself on an island. You can press E as much as you want. Lee Ming goes down. Karen combination, two first and stun. John Cena getting in on the action. Another member of Miasma Esports is going to go down. You got the sixth member of Brawl's Deep uh, just giving the Hulk <laughs> smash. Steps off the bench, securing the fifth takedown. Both teams did ever have their level 7 talents. They should be able to come away with this top four now that Miasm Esports is effectively back away. Nice start for Brawl's D. 
So what's interesting is Prunk Juice took uh, a space shift build, but he then picked up clans at seven. Interesting. I uh, I would point out that Zagara in the mid lane loses their face from the rotation. <laughs> the next Wait, shrine phase is uh, not going to be too pretty for Miasma as Ten is slowly creeping up for Brawl's Deep. Yeah, this raid it's for sure should happen. The nice start though to try to turn things around. They do manage to get the kill on Bright One. That's not bad. Four members of Miasma Esports are rotating around. The siege camp is picked up bottom left corner. Starbador on Uther gets knocked down, <laughs> knocked off his mount by by the siege cam. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, Any uh, standout talent choices, Aku? Yeah, we got the Emerald Wind coming out, the Force Wall. We got Commander Odin, so it will be the Odin choice. Specialty almost getting caught out there from Tantro, but he does manage to dash away. But Zag, in the meantime, has fallen for the count once again. In the top lane, Crunk Juice and FZ Ignition say, hey, we got damage. Carrying Combination Polymorph enough to lock you in. Um, further is staggering out the lead. Stun goes in on specialty bottom lane. Discord Strike silences Tychus. He goes away. And this isn't looking good at all for uh, Tyrael. Burnt that Sanctification. He's been caught out, but he is using his smite to get away <laughs> partially. And Crunk Juice has now burned the Emerald Wind. This is really not looking good for Brawl's Deep for the Shrine phase. This has swung back in their favor. They are alive and well in game two of this set. Polymorph gets interrupted. That's a short cooldown. It'll be back in six seconds. Crunk Juice is going to rotate up. Who's without Emerald Wind thanks to a perfectly timed Telekinesis Discord Strike? Yes, me Sports looking to get this party started sooner rather than later. Trying to get a lead towards the next point. Yeah, they picked up that mosh pit, so they're definitely doing trying to do the maw into mosh pit combo. They also got the disintegrate uh, along with the counter strike and finally the divine shield. Telekinesis, Discord Strike on FC Ignition, further pressure still, halfway health and falling. Counter Strike goes in. Right wing teleports in. Right wing does not yet have Emerald Wind. They are able to get FC Ignition out of there. And uh, you pointed out the, the Counter-Strike heroic that they get used there. I think that's a really smart choice against Kerrigan's in here. Yeah, you, you basically see her come in, you hit the Counter-Strike, and she does nothing. Speaking of, there's the exact opposite of nothing going on over this Shrine phase. 25, the Devouring Maul gobbles up a member. Sanctification is going to help him out. Perfectly timed for Nail. FC Ignition caught for it. Specialty on Odin for with the resistance, though. Crunk Juice steps in with the Emerald Wind, saves his bacon. Starbador is low on health. All the health bars are low on the side of me as me. Sports to met the uh, Mosh Pit is going to get interrupted again. A swift bloodbath, Akuma. This is crazy. Yeah, Swollen was not able to do anything with that Mosh. I, I felt like he was running around like a chicken without his head just because he didn't know who to engage on or what to do. He was kind of sitting back. He was, during that fight, and Tantro was really, really doing a lot of work there, getting a lot of DPS onto Brawl's Deep, but really Swollen was just like sitting around in the back line, uh, not killing, not stunning. Yeah, I mean, Swollen, th this poor man has just been trying to get one mosh pit in. <laughs> that was like the third time it's been interrupted. Level 13 talent, though, is here for Brawl's Deep. More to punish at half health. This middle fort should be able to stay alive so long as members on the side of me as these first don't drop. But look at that shield on FC Ignition. Forces out the Divine Shield onto ETC. Is the follow-up going to be there? Key power slides out. And they're, and they're in a bit of a bind right now since they're playing down a talent here as well. So this Punisher is pushing in. They have all five members for all deep. And they can force the issue on this keep since they, and they are up a talent here. Yeah, I mean, the ball's for sure in their court, but they might end up overstaying if that Discord strike after the Telekinesis does work. Crunk Juice is looking to shuck and jive. Still has the Emerald win if it came down to it. He's able to get away. Specialty dashes back. Telekinesis says not so fast. Discord strike afterwards. He's silenced. Chases on. Nailter jumps in. He does have Sanctification if he gets antsy. Emerald Wind is still there. And uh, that was close. They managed to get out. Yeah, uh, I was expecting specialty to go down there and he just walked away like there was nothing about to happen to him <laughs> this is real casual about it i mean 
Sanctification Emerald Wind were up. So I'd be, like, I'm sure over the comms are like, nah, it's alright, guys. I'm just gonna keep walking away. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I, I guess he taught a couple of classes at the Ministry of Silly Walks. <laughs> He gets out of there. I mean, one thing that was huge about that is that um, as me sports didn't have their 13 talents. So that's a huge power spike. If uh, Lee Ming had glass can or something like that, I think we'd have a different conversation right now. Yeah, that would have been most likely a secure kill for them. I mean, let alone everyone else on their team having 13s would be absolutely huge. It was was actually impressive was the the patience to withhold using all their heroics, things like Maw, to try and secure that kill too. Overwatch is this a rap stream? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Divine Shield is going to save the bacon of Tantro for the moment. Emerald Wind goes in. Sanctification is still here if it gets dicey. Kerrigan combination on Swollen's face. Stakes yet again. Tantro is going to be able to hearth back. Unless he gets interrupted, no, he gets out of there. But this bottom four is going to get conceded. Yeah, they, they were already burnt their Divine Shield there. There was. Pretty much no hope once Tiger dropped that force wall. And ETC had already burned his power slide, so he was actually power sliding um, while being uh, a little animal. I, I, <laughs> I don't see that every day, a power sliding animal, but it was pretty fun to see. Not too bad. I mean, Brawl's Deep have really done a good job of limiting the options for uh, momentum swings. From Yasmin's voice. That was that last little progression after the last Punisher uh, was one of the few moments where they've really been able to fight on even talents here on equal footing, and at the end of it, it comes away 16 to 13. So Miasmi Sports are actually looking to contest this down a severe disadvantage. Could get interesting. I feel like the, this is their hell Mary where they realize we, we need to try something, anything at all possible. But uh, it looks like we're gonna have an Uther though. Throwing that Hail Mary and actually going down here. Yeah, he's a ghost for the next few seconds. He goes up. They do manage to force out Sanctification. That's one of the uh, escape hatches that will not be available to them for this next push. But I don't know if Brawl's Deep is even going to need it. They're going to let this Arcane Punisher free push in the bot lane. They small wall the middle keep. They're looking to get aggressive here, Akuma. Yeah, this is the perfect thing to do. You, you let a Punisher either push alone since it's an Arcane Punisher and I'll do a lot of work along with the minion wave pushing in, or you go and support it when you've already gotten in a kill and it's 5v4. And plus you got John Cena there, so technically it's a 6v4. They almost ended up paying for that though. They were split up between mid and bot lane pretty good. The mosh pit finally goes in, he gets it. He gets the stun on specialty, but it is interrupted in time for him to get back and get a shield. Swollen on the return, he goes up. Li Ming's gonna drop as well. That's the last hero you wanna see go down when you're trying to defend your remaining keeps. Stun goes in on Starbador, Uther caught forward. He evaporates, he's a ghost again. Alarak's gonna go down. Getting out of hand, Kuma. <laughs> Fortunately, the Holy Ghost uh, isn't, isn't good enough to keep Tantra up there. And with that, there's four members down. And this is looking like it's gonna be easy core call from Brawl's Deep now. Uh, Axe Max would have to make the game the devouring maul of his life. Throws it in. Uh, he gobbles up three members. You're going to see Ooh, Lee Ming back to business. Window. Emerald win. Core's at 50% in falling. FZ ignition oh, low on health. God. Can we get a cooldown reset? Oh. Yes, we can. ETC goes down. Tyrael drops. He's going to blow up on the core. But have they done this, Akuma? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was literally <laughs> holding my breath there. And now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now. Let's go through the four keeps and everything else. We got this, guys. GG game three. Kappa. <laughs> In a core, not like this. <laughs> Whew. That was absolutely insane. The problem, though, is, like you said, they have to go through a port, <laughs> go through a keep, and get to the core. They can literally smork the core now brawls deep and it pretty much ensure victory unless they they cut them off while they're trying to throw their face at the core and start picking off members of brawls deep when they decide hey we can just literally walk up there and try and win the game yeah i mean this is one of those really rough situations where it's cool that you stop the you stop the game like you don't you don't lose right your core is 11 percent but you're so far behind in structures what can you really even do 
They decided to go over and get the middle fort. That's not a bad start. But Akuma, I feel like the best bet for them would have actually been to just start getting camps and try to apply a whole bunch of pressure because that middle fort in the grand scheme of things, the siege camp doesn't get too much value. I feel like if they were going to try to go for a fort, the top one with the bruiser camps would have been better. Yeah, top, top uh, bruisers would definitely be a lot of value. And like you said, they could have ran over to that shaman camp and taken Brawl's Deep Shamans, then gone in their own Shamans, and they provide so much value and take away so many shots on the fort, allowing it to go down really quickly. But they are on even talent tiers, which they haven't been for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, they were down three levels going into the last punish phase, and now they're only down a level in even talent tiers. 20's not anywhere in sight for Brawl's Deep. This is the moment for me as me. They already had Tiger getting everyone topped off with shields. Like, everyone has so much shielding in HP now. Look at FC Ignition's health bar, or, or should I say shield bar? But disintegration <laughs> goes in, devouring Maul. Sanctification gets used as well. Axe maxed on the flank, getting pressure from FC Ignition. Maelstrom pops, so does Zagar, and he goes down. Nailter's low on health, trying to apply further pressure. Swollen ETC power slides, misses Crump Juice, throws in the mosh pit to save his own neck, but I think that's just more or less for posterity. He used the face melt. Is he getting out of this? Are you kidding? Oh my god. No specialty is gonna say something about this. Oh no, ETC finally does blow up. That's one day cow. We're having beef for dinner. Steaks, filet, mignon, kappa, and everything else. Bruiser Camp was picked up in the top left corner that casually strolled its way over to this top keep. It's going to help itself to that. Now it's uh, Fox's turn to have the heroic try to save <laughs> try to save this game. But with the core at 11%. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's out. He's out. <laughs> a swing and a miss. Yeah. Again, a valiant effort, Akuma. But at the end of it all, Brawl's Deep remained perfect. Yeah, their execution is so good as a team. What was also interesting, Tazadar picked up second strike, so he he literally feared no one. He said, I don't care about presence and basically having double health bars. I'm going to just go and DPS with the best of them. And it worked out. I mean... In the draft, you and I were saying, you know, Miaz Me Sports on paper had the stronger composition. I've, and I still stand by that. And it was going to come down to Brawl's Deep just executing at a high level to put on so much aggression that it forces out a passive posture from Yasmin Esports. And that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, and if you actually look at like the, the damage numbers, Fox put out so much damage. Uh, Alarak put out nearly the same level as Tychus. Uh, Kerrigan, Zag... Um, similar levels of damage. I just feel the the Tassadar shielding, the healing from Brightwing, the material shielding was just gave them so much sustain in those mm. team fights. Then Swollen basically had the worst day of his life when anytime <laughs> he tried to mosh, uh, they basically kicked him off the dance floor. <laughs> I know. I felt so bad for him, man. Like it just kept getting interrupted. And then when he finally got the mosh pit, he just got like, polymorphed out of it. I mean, that, that's the tough part of uh, when you first pick ETC, because it's just like, all right, well, we can just make sure we have enough enough ways to interrupt that and we just kind of punish that pick, so. Yeah, it becomes really easy, and which is why a lot of people have gone with the stage dive, because, well, there's literally nothing to do to counter it other than knowing where he's landing and then just dropping a ton of CC on him as soon as he lands. Yeah, I mean, MSB Sports, they're a really good team. Um, we saw, we definitely saw signs of life for them and, and signs of a proficiency throughout that set. Like I said, a lesser team, that would have been two very short games. But they were able to turn things around and really rally in the mid game. I think that's something of a specialty of theirs. Pun not intended since someone <laughs> set up Pro Dude's <laughs> literally named specialty. But <laughs> at least in this second game, I just feel like they needed to have a dominant early game before Sanctification and Emerald Wind came about. They needed to be like a level or two ahead by the time Brawl's Deep hit level 10 if they were going to try to force a game three. Yeah, and and unfortunately for Miasma Esports, they played a lot of the game from behind. Mm -hmm. uh, 
especially when that Tran fight happened and it was already 10, they had to give up Punishers. And when you're giving up Punishers, you're basically putting yourself on a timer of, okay, when are we going to lose this game? Because we've now lost forts. Uh, we have pressure on our keeps. We're down talents. Every, every turn of the game, Miasma was down in some form or fashion. And once they got that amazing wipe on the core, they really couldn't capitalize because they literally had nothing done to Brawl's Deep up until that point. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good good observation. One thing that I would, I would give credit to Brawl's Deep, and once you, when you see teams operate at a, at a certain level, like, you see the end result, but you don't exactly understand how it happens. Like, Brawl's Deep allowed Zagara to push pretty much the entire time at the bottom for that first Punisher phase. And they even lost a hero in that 4v5 team fight and still ended up being ahead in experience by the end of it. It's just like, <laughs> how does that work? Like, how does that happen? Like, I don't What's know. It. Actually, really funny is that Denial Esports did the same thing today. Literally the same thing against uh, MVP Black. They said... We're going to give you, uh, although it was a little bit more drastic, they said, we're going to give you the Punisher, the very first Punisher, and we're going to go and push a fort as a team. Mm. And then we don't really care that you got the first Punisher. And it almost seemed like they were mimicking that behavior from Denial, where they said, okay, Zag, just just keep pushing. We'll, we'll harass them. Maybe we'll get a kill, whatever. We'll give them the first Punisher. And we'll hopefully stay ahead in XP. But when they gave them the two kills, they couldn't keep that really fat XP lead. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was just a gamble that didn't pay off. I'm wondering if maybe that was a Zul instead of a Zagara, <clears throat> that that might have worked out a little better because, the you know, the depths of the minions would have turned into skeletons, and I feel in general Zul has stronger push power on that front, and it would even have given them some more consistent lockdown outside of Devouring Maul. I mean, but at the same time, the Devouring Maul saved the game. Like, that three-person Devouring Maul... That didn't happen right when it did. GG. Yeah. That that maw from Axe Master was <laughs> literally a, a play of the game moment. If <laughs> if they had gone on to win this game, you'd basically say Axe Master won it for them in that very moment. For sure. Because like because we were talking about it as the core was going, I was like, he's gonna have to have like a world class devouring mall. And like right as I was in that sentence, it was like, oh, but the three person devouring mall. I was cracking up. <laughs> That's the dream. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of their dream of winning the match didn't occur. Yeah, it didn't pan out for him. But I mean, when you're going up against a team like Brawls Deep, it's getting to the point now where it's like it's more about the moral victory. It's just like, well, we didn't we didn't get like entirely stomped, because th this team is just good. Like they are just consistently good. Yeah, they really are. You don't get to stick out of position. You don't get to make mistakes. You don't get to ineffectively rotate against a team like Brawls Deep because they're gonna be there to punish it at every turn. Yeah, and their drafts are always solid. Like, regardless of the fact that maybe Zarya could have been a stronger pick and plays a Tassadar, their Tassadar just shielded everyone up. Literally, you you all you saw was shields mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, that was really good. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad we got the cast to, got the chance to cast together for the first time. We got to do this yeah, again. That was awesome. Um, but that was the only chair league bit i had for the evening this literally came about akuma like the last minute like um synth paradox messaged me on twitch and was like hey uh brawls deep man's me sports are gonna play and uh, i was like it was like eight minutes before it started the match and i was like oh, i can do it so thanks for jumping in man yeah no problem thanks for for asking i i literally just finished up my my match and uh decided to watch the other chair league games nice man well, that's going to be it. My name is Haloran. Appreciate all the follows. I'm on Twitter at underscore Haloran. This is this young man cast with me is Akuma, another very prominent uh, chair lead caster. Be sure to follow him. Uh, 2Ks. Yep. A-K-K-U-M-A. -K -K give him a follow on Twitch. He casts a bunch too. Um, do you have a Twitter account? Uh, I do. It's uh, A-K-K-U-M-A. -K -K I'll actually just type it in. Yeah, that in works. Twitch chat. So yeah, give him a follow. Uh, really cool dude. 
Um, but for now, it's going to be it that we had for the evening. So you guys have a good night. Hope to see you again soon. See you. Yeah, thanks again, everyone, for uh, joining us.